Good morning, cloud community, and welcome back to beautiful Paris. It's day three of KubeCon Cloud Native Con here in fantastic Europe. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by Rob Stretche and Dustin Kirkland. Gentlemen, what a week we have had. Here we are, it's Friday. Here we <laughs> Yes, quite literally, here we are <laughs> and it is Friday. Thank you for that in-depth analysis I, there. I'm here for the, for the yeah. hard-hitting news. <laughs> we're, we're, we're bringing it home <laughs> with that hard news. <laughs> what is, okay, opening question for you. What's your favorite thing you've eaten so far this week? Rob, I'm going to start with you. Uh, mussels frites. I just, I, I yes. can't get enough of them. I had it twice now and I'm, I'm, I'm at probably my muscle limit, but you know, <laughs> I'm not going to break out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you have been a great Paris guide for all of us, by the way. I just oh, want to thank say thank you. you. You've, been, you've been awesome on the reservations and, and sharing things. What about you, Dustin? Favorite oh, guide? my God. Um, I, crepes after midnight were <laughs> You had that cheeky good. little sneaky crepe. I did. I did. The, uh, the uh, right. caramel sucre bure, the, the caramel butter crepe was incredible. Oh, I love that. Yes. Some of the cheese we've had has just... Yeah. Cheese has been great as well. The cheese is yes. fantastic. <laughs> and the wine, oh my goodness. Uh, so in, in non-Parisian news, keynote analysis, sounds like there was a bit of a, a trip down memory lane, if you will, today. It was, it was nostalgia mo morning, for sure. I mean, it's 10 years of Kubernetes, and CNCF celebrated that, and we heard a number of stories from you know, some people who've been around the community for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have a whole celebration. I, I think that was the biggest piece of news out of this morning was they're going to do kubertenies.cncf.org or something like that. We'll put it up there afterwards where you can go and sign up and they're going to sponsor parties in June for the 10 year anniversary. I thought that was interesting. I, I thought that could have been the trip down memory lane. We, I didn't know that we needed three trips down memory lane. Um, I thought it was. I, would, I thought it was interesting. I I liked when they got into some of the accessibility aspects. I know you have her on, very, yeah. yep. and you're having her on later on today. Uh, I I thought it was a very good. From that perspective, I, I I just think they went overboard with the, you know, hour and a half of memory lane. It's just hard for some people to relate to that, and you know, over half of this. Conference. I was just going to bring it up, Dustin. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, half of this conference has never been to a, a cloud native or KubeCon ever before. Right. I, I mean, it's just a little self-serving, I, I think, to spend so much time talking about you know the good old days if people can't really relate to that. Well, and I think as we've been talking about Kubernetes having its Linux moment, there's this ubiquity play happening. We're only just now seeing what Kubernetes is really going to do. Mm. Kubernetes has been a tool for 10 years, but it has not been deployed across verticals at scale until, honestly, like fairly recently, the last couple of years, and, and even the last couple of months in some cases. So, and with AI pushing some of that tech stack forward. So I, I think that to your point, folks coming here, they need, they need the excitement and the hype and the gateway. This is their first time. Yeah. Teach me, teach What's me next? what it's, yeah. Or, or show me, if we're, if we're going to do nostalgia, show me a bunch of really cool applications of Kubernetes at the edge and, right. and fun yeah. stuff and so yeah. that I can turn around and tell my friends and family or whatever, this is where Kubernetes yeah. is running, this is why I'm excited about this technology and why I'm proud to be a part of the cloud native community. Yeah, and I, I think, again, you know, Heroku was up there as a sponsor and they, they had, <laughs> that was another trip down memory lane, but I, I think, <laughs> You know, them being grounded on Kubernetes was like the takeaway from that. We had Oracle up there uh, talking about their contributions, again, where they have Kubernetes, the platform, they have OpenTelemetry and a number of other projects that are developing on, uh, on those free credits, the $3 million that they announced yep. back in Chicago, and they're continuing to do that. Uh, and they talked about how, you know, again, and we'll have her on in uh, actually next. So I, I think it'll be very interesting to get into that they're contributing to over 500 different projects. And I, I think, again, this whole community has been great this week. I agree. I think it's, we should be also looking forward. This should have been, they, they had a moment to say, here's happy 10 years here's where we go in the next 10 years and lay out the roadmap. And that's what I was wanting out of this morning and point. didn't get it. I think, again, we had Chris on last night, the CTO of CNCF, 
talking about the changes they made and they made those recognitions this morning. Yeah, he gave us a preview on, on the show on theCUBE last night and I, I think we saw that uh, in what he announced uh, there in this morning in the keynote. And I, I thought he did a, a good job of pointing out to people in, I guess, Blue Jackets. I, I didn't realize they had Blue Jackets. I don't remember that from last night. But So I, I think it was good, but I, I think, I thought his talk was excellent, but I thought you could have then gone into the roadmap and said, here's how we get these 180 projects to all you know, go in the same direction to help cloud native. I, we were actually, I was having a conversation earlier this morning too about you know, do some of the smaller projects combine forces if they're complementary so that there's more contributors and more folks yep. engaged. And it, it is an interesting, you know, it's an interesting balance, right? Yeah, one thing we did get, literally, where we're going in the future, uh, they announced the next two years' worth of uh, KubeCons and those locations. Salt Lake yeah. City, I think we knew, uh, but the next, uh, London, uh, the next uh, uh, KubeCon uh, yeah. EU in April, followed by Los Angeles, uh, sorry, Atlanta oh, uh, in the US. We're going to Hotlanta. Uh, Atlanta, uh, back to Amsterdam after that. Oh. I think you may enjoy that. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Los much. Angeles. Yes. Uh, so they we're going back to LA. Yeah. I like the comment of why they said we're going back to Amsterdam, which is after being in this building, yeah. the light that was in natural there. And light, I just yeah. remember the natural light coming in I had my, son, in I us. Had my sunglasses know, was, on. Literally got to broadcast so what, we, the shades on. We just got to remember for that to bring our sunglasses <laughs> to, uh, to back to Or to Amsterdam. find some great, great swag vendors. There you go. Yeah. With some, I, I yeah. agree. With, with some opti awesome optical. I didn't realize they announced that. Normally yep. they're a little quiet about that. Two sometimes. years out, yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice actually to be able to, you know, so wait, so we're going to, are we going to London next year or is it? London next. Yeah, London and then Amsterdam. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully we come back to Paris though. This has been. Be fun. This is a magical business trip. Yeah. This is, <laughs> the fact that we're talking about Kubernetes in Paris, file under things I did not <laughs> anticipate in this wonderful wildlife we've designed, but I am grateful for it. That's for sure. Yeah, now, I, I think what was interesting, just tying it back to Paris, was Solomon's discussion about, you know, Docker Doing started Docker, in his yeah, mother's in his basement, basement yeah, a couple walking blocks distance away from here. here. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that, that was actually one of the, the cooler moments. So yeah, that was. Solomon, uh, founder of uh, Docker, and now Dagger IO, uh, gave a keynote about kind of the history of Docker and the, the, the precedence that it set for uh, Kubernetes. And I think Bob Wise, now the CEO of Heroku, Heroku being that PaaS that paved the way quite a bit, you know, App Engine and, and uh, Google's App Engine and Heroku, that sort of sets it up, right? And both of those paved the way for wanting and needing the open source infrastructure that is Kubernetes itself, Docker providing the, uh, the, the, the better reinvention of Solaris containers, Linux containers, to put it into this developer friendly you know, Docker mindset. I thought Solomon actually did a really nice job of tying this back to AI, uh, which he described. We haven't all, talked about that at all this week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. We should we should do a segment on AI, right? <laughs> uh, he brought it back to AI, saying that look, all of this was about building all of the you know the previous Docker work was about building factories to make software, uh, cloud native applications, make those able to deploy, and then he kind of gave this hint that guess what? Artificial intelligence is just a better factory. It's really you know, helping us make software faster, better, cheaper, more efficient in the long run. So anyway, I thought that was a nice way to, to sort of tie it all back together. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of love. I mean, the, the, you know, Docker, Kubernetes, sometimes tools that companies use both, sometimes there's a little bit of healthy competition there, but definitely a foundational and, and important yeah. component of this whole ecosystem. Yeah, I, I will say, that even before Solaris, mainframes had containers as well. <laughs> so I'm just not even going to go there because we didn't go that far back. But anyways, those of us who you know, had to use green screens at one point yep. in time in our life understood that. It's 3270s, yes, baby. Yes, absolutely. So, but I, I thought it was good Now to, who's getting nostalgic? Well, yeah, no kidding. Right. You know, we're going <laughs> right. down. I'm going to call but, you both out for that <laughs> after you complain about the Gino. But we're giving, it, we're giving it for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> But yeah, so, like I said, two minutes is But where real. we're going, I thought the, the, the software factory aspect and tying that back into AI and what people are really looking to do is build cloud native applications and AI is just going to be a cloud native application. And I think some of the talks that we've had this week with people about AI being integrated in, and I think especially on the UX, when we were talking to Mo from Red Hat, yeah. when she talked about that, and I, I think she, you know, in her closing remarks, 
really set a good direction of Agreed. like I, I look at it and go, I don't want to use a prompt all the time. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily want to talk to my AI all the time. I want it to be there like I don't even notice it's there. And I think that's where AI is going to go. And I think a lot of the developers here this week have been talking about that. Yeah, I think you're definitely right. I do love that one of the key themes of the show has really been the developer experience. And, and I mean, we've talked about platform engineering, but really the UX of all of this stuff, because decreasing complexity has been a component of Kubernetes, it's a component of AI. Nobody wants things to be as hard as they are. No. No, so it's, yeah, I don't know. So I'm curious, are there any big surprises for you guys from the show? Or anything you expected to talk more about that didn't come up as much? Well, I think when we talked about this on Wednesday, I was hoping we'd talk a little more about security, but I think we had a, a we know you love solid, some I do, I do, yeah. I do, I do. I come by it honestly. Yeah. But I think we had a good solid program yesterday. all day yesterday yeah. on, on security, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad we uh, kind of whet that appetite. I, I, think, I think, again, that I, again, they could have said, hey, by, by the way, join us at SecurityCon and other stuff, because I, I think still to, your, to the discussion we had yesterday, Pretty much everybody who was on talking about security also admitted that there wasn't a lot of security right. here That's right. at the show, other I, I than us. I think that shows an appetite for yeah. it, yeah. yeah. No, I, well, I, I mean, think the appetite is more than just me savvy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> well, I mean when okay, the you affirm yourself however you want, <laughs> dear. Yeah. But, <laughs> but when the EU puts out an AI act a week and a half before, and a big <laughs> piece of it is security, and you know, making sure I mean, that we- security is really important. Yeah, it's like, very it, important. In fairness. Especially to data, and to AI and to all of that. And I, I, yeah. think, I, think, I think even in Salt Lake, I think they'll maybe arc a little bit back to that, hopefully. Yeah. We'll see, I mean, I think it's also an interesting demarcator of the talk tracks, right? So, you know, these, these proposals and the agenda is set quite a bit in advance of oh, these yeah. shows. So, maybe that wasn't the hottest topic. I mean, this is our first European show since ChatGPT was released where the papers were actually representative of that. And I actually, I would say the biggest surprise for me now that I'm talking out loud, and I'll ask myself this question, is, uh, <laughs> I have insights too, you know, not just the pretty face here, uh, is, is I'm surprised, I actually thought we would be talking about AI more. Okay. I genuinely did, I thought, I thought there would be some more large scale examples or interesting, and, and it's come up, but it's yeah. been a subtle thread, yeah. not, not the main fabric of the show. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if within these next couple of conferences, you know, the, the, the biggest booths right in the front center are the hyperscale clouds, you know, the, right. the Googles and the Microsofts and Oracle, uh, Intel, all of which have an AI play. Uh, I think one or two of these AI startups are going to break through and you know become some of the biggest players in this space within the next you know six to eighteen months. I like yeah. that. Hot six take. is probably too short, but maybe by London. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think I, so. think, I, I think I think you might be right. I think so. I agree with that. I think again, where they retold the story of OpenAI running on Kubernetes and how they had really done a large cluster on it, people are looking at it and people aren't building. Open AI per se. So I think, to your point, I expected to hear more about Kubeflow and some of the other and ML ops and things in ML flow and things of that nature. But I, I do think there was a lot of undercurrents of it mm -hmm. in a lot of different, especially on, on Tuesday in the days. Pretty much every session that I went to had some amount of AI in it on Tuesday. So I know it's being talked about out there. Yep. Uh, and it is, and how it, you it know, just didn't make its way it. to this it, desk. It didn't. It didn't make its way as obviously to here. So that was that. That was interesting, though. I agree with your insight on that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the validation. No problem. <laughs> I'm here for you. Uh, last question before we wrap up this morning segment: What are you hoping we can say in London that we can't say today? Oh, good question. Um, I. I really think like if we take that AI and security and put those two together and really say that you know we've got secured tool chains, supply chains, models, the whole thing, that we can deploy that at the edge, in the back end infrastructure, and know that our precious data that's being used to, to train those models is secured, I, I really hope that's a mostly solved problem by uh, London. I, I, I I agree. I, I think the security aspect of it and 
for me, it's the data's not getting any smaller, and I think the operations aspect of it needs to get simpler, and especially with still the overlap in some of the projects, I'm hoping that some of these projects come together and, and kind of put out joint roadmaps uh, versus yeah. kind of operating you know, in silos a little bit and try almost competing with each other. I mean, competition is healthy, but at the same time, it causes confusion, especially to the 51% of new people who are coming in here right. trying to figure out Good which point. part do I use to go and do that. Right. So. Yeah. I hope I have a really good example to tell the people in my life that don't know anything about Kubernetes or this space, how oh, it's great. transforming the world and, yeah. and either saving lives or improving the quality of life of everyday people and not just in our little geek silo. So there was, I mean, from the keynote, there was the discussion about the hackathon with the UN. They're going to do that again in Salt Lake. Yep. Or is it in London? I can't remember which one it was now. But, yeah, I mean, again, it was around sustainability and parks. I, I thought they were interesting. I didn't quite get all the ties to sustainability for some of them. No, but I definitely want to go and learn a bit more about those yes, projects. I'm going to uh, dig in on that. It, was, it didn't get nearly enough airtime, I think, actually, yeah. in the keynote, but they awarded three prizes for second, third place for three different hackathon winners from yeah. uh, five or six different countries. You know, yeah. it, was, it was all over the place. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah yes. But that's something that can bring this back and make it you know, more make what we do more relatable to our friends and family who have no idea what a Kubernetes is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. I always love those, those real world stories and, and love sharing uh, the nerdy stories with you both. Yeah. So, Same here. Rob, Dustin, thank you both so much for being here this week. You've you, absolutely Savvy. smashed it. It's a pleasure to work with all of you. And thank you for tuning in live for our wonderful Paris broadcast here at KubeCon Cloud Native Con. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.